Hey, what's up everybody and welcome to another episode of the HTML Show. I'm Dan Pickett, co-founder of Launch Academy. Here in Boston, we just kicked off another course. Excited to be uh, launching with uh, all of our wonderful students in the fall 2016 cohort. Uh, but today, I'm here to talk to you about HTML and CSS and continue our work in the front-end engineering uh, that we're doing uh, to date. So, so far we've talked about W3C validation, HTML5, accessibility, all that good stuff. And we're going to continue to dive into that material uh, and we're going to finish up our discussion this week around HTML elements and the basics of just writing good semantic markup. Uh, so we're really psyched uh, to be rounding that out. And on Thursday, we're actually going to be starting with CSS in writing our first cascading style sheet. Uh, so be ready for that on Thursday. We're gonna start to make uh, our awesome standardized, uh, standards compliant markup. We're gonna make that uh, start to look pretty using cascading style sheets. But today we have to cover uh, one important piece of HTML and that's the HTML table. And I wanted to cover this in a complete episode because HTML tables can tend to get quite a bit of a bad rap uh, in, get it, rap in HTML. Uh, but anyway, uh, HTML tables get a, a bad rap as it pertains to the data that it tries to encapsulate and, and kind of cover. So I wanted to spend a day uh, just going through and essentially taking what we have here from the New England Patriots uh, game schedule and putting that into an HTML table to kind of drive home the point of what makes for good tabular data. So today we're going to uh, start off first by installing an Atom plugin and getting a little bit more proficient uh, in our editor. And then we're gonna actually go ahead and implement that HTML table, uh, taking the uh, New England Patriots schedule and adding it to our web page. Uh, and we're gonna talk a little bit about the olden days of writing layouts and making pages look pretty. And we actually used to do that with something called HTML tables, which is kind of wild and uh, an old idea. But I just wanna talk a little bit about how the semantic nature of an HTML table should be used and encapsulated. And that's why we're gonna start with the schedule data here. All right, so before we jump into the actual table that we're gonna develop, first I wanted to tell you and show you that Atom has this really neat plugin architecture. So if you go to uh, preferences uh, in your Atom uh, pull down menu here, you can actually go to this install window and there's all kinds of great packages that you can install to extend and uh, add things to your Atom editor. So you wanna make sure that uh, as you get more sophisticated as a web developer, that you start to think about uh, how your editor could be used in innovative and quick ways. Your uh, most important commodity as a developer is your own time. So if there are tools and plugins that you can incorporate into your editor and into your browser, you wanna make sure that you're actually in taking those in and, and making them uh, save you time uh, because time is the most valuable thing that you have as a developer. So anything that can save you that time, you wanna make sure you use like uh, we're going to use here. So uh, my favorite, uh, uh, one of my favorites as it pertains to HTML editing is this Atom Wrap and Tag uh, package. And again, I'm in my preferences here in Atom, and I'm going to the install window, and I'm just gonna hit install on Atom Wrap and Tag. And a good way to judge whether a plugin is, uh, is, is worthwhile is based on how many downloads uh, it has. And you can also kind of pull up the information about that particular uh, plugin. And you can get a feel for when it was last updated by looking at the repo and seeing here that, you know, this isn't that old. It's uh, been, been updated in February 2nd. So we look at the number of downloads and we look at how often it's updated on GitHub here. And we're able to basically make an, a determination on whether that is a worthwhile plugin to make use of and download and install. So we've done, gone ahead and done that. So now that uh, that is available to us, I can actually use Control-Alt-Shift-W, I believe, 
um, Alt Shift W to wrap elements uh, or text in an HTML tag. So we're gonna make use of that as we go through this uh, Patriot schedule. So what we wanna do is we're, I'm here in my uh, HTML web page that we've created in previous episodes and I'm gonna create a new section called Favorite Team Schedule. And uh, if this is unfamiliar to you, this section tag in the assignment of IDs and classes, go uh, take a moment, hit pause on this video, and just review uh, last week's episode on layouts uh, and using sections and uh, headers and footers as part of our discussion of HTML. All right, so we've got this section laid out, and if we actually go ahead and open this up, we're gonna see here that the introduction of this section actually did not uh, have an impact on the overall display of my page. But what I want to do is I want to essentially be able to list out uh, everything that uh, is happening in the Patriots regular season so that uh, I have an easy place to reference uh, when the game is, who they're playing, what networks it's on, uh, if I can grab it online, or if I can listen to it on the radio. So uh, when you're writing your first HTML tables, you want to give a little bit of thinking and planning on how you're going to do that. So the number one thing that you want to keep track of is the information that you want to retain and you, you want to display. So I want to retain uh, sort of the, the, the number game that the Patriots are going to be playing. When the game is, both in date and time, I want to know who they're playing and where they're playing. And I also want to know uh, what channels I'm going to be able to watch the games on. So we're gonna do a table to basically reflect all of this data so that we can uh, have that nice point of reference. And this is the most common use case for using an HTML table. We've got related information that has rows and columns to it. Uh, and we wanna basically be able to relate and associate that data in the context of our HTML web page. So, one thing I might do is think about a sample row that I want to create as part of my HTML table. So the HTML table is going to look a little bit like this. And this is going to be the first time where uh, our, our nesting is super, super important uh, as it pertains to our markup here. So I'm going to just provide a little bit of markup and I'll walk through each piece of this markup as, as we go. So we open up our table tag to basically say and tell the, w, the W3C in the browser that we're going to have a, a series of tabular data uh, in the context of our HTML web page. And then underneath the table, we're going to actually put in a table row or a TR tag that's gonna basically associate a set of table cells together. So here we see the game index and we're gonna have the opponent of who the Patriots are gonna be playing that day and it's gonna be the Cardinals. And we wanna know if they're home or away and it looks like they're away. And we wanna know the date of the game which in this case, it's gonna be a Sunday, September 11th. And the game is gonna be at 8.30 p.m. EDT. So what I've done here is I've kind of mocked up or wireframed out um, the first row in my, in my table. And this row represents a game or a week in the Patriots season. So we're saying this is the first game in the season. They're playing the Cardinals. The game's going to be away and it's going to be on the 11th of September and it's going to be at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard, Eastern Standard Time. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and refresh our page. And you can see here that it's gone ahead and added a row uh, to our HTML web page. And right now, the display of this isn't very beautiful. And like the rest of the markup that we've gone ahead and incorporated into this page, we're not going to be focused on the styling today. We're going to be focused on creating good semantic markup. Uh, and in this case, representing this schedule in the form of tabular data. So watch what happens if I create a second row. And it's the same data here, but we're going to basically create two rows represented by the, the TR tag. So the way that this table reads in the context of our HTML right now is that we've got a table with two rows indicated by the two TR tags and five cells indicated by the sets of five cells in each row. So we've got a two by five table right now and you can see how that's reflected in the HTML markup uh, in our web page here. So that's all well and good. Let's flesh this schedule out quite a bit to see uh, how this markup can help us uh, as we flesh out our schedule. So we're moving on to game two here. And the game, game two is going to be against the Dolphins. And the game is going to be at home. And the game is going to be on the 18th at 1 p.m. All right, so we go ahead and save that and we refresh the page. And we can see how uh, this table markup is assisting us uh, in the creation of our schedule. Just gonna make this a little bit bigger for everybody. All right. So I'm just gonna fill out uh, the first couple of uh, games and then we're gonna tweak our table uh, to basically reflect uh, how we want to represent this data uh, on our HTML web page here. So I'm just going to continue to copy rows and fill in data as I work through the schedule. So game three is going to be against the Texans. And this is going to be uh, at 825. And the game is going to be on the 22nd. And we're going to be at home. All right. So I'm good there. And I'm just going to continue to reflect the various games that we have available here. Game four, we're playing against the Buffalo Bills. Big rivalry. And that game is going to be on October 2nd. And that game is going to take place at 1 p.m. All right. So we'll do one more. Game five is going to be at the Browns away. And the game is going to be uh, on October 9th. And that's a 1 o'clock game as well. All right, so I don't have anything to change. Now, notice that by order, by chronological order, we're associating this cell with this cell uh, in the second row. And the order and the context at which we display these TD tags or table data tags really matters, right? So if I modify, well, let's refresh our page just before we jump into modifying here and take a look at what the table looks like right now. We can see here that uh, the order matters, the, the context matters here. So we've got game one against the Cardinals and we can associate this data with the uh, subsequent rows in our table. So 
We play the Cardinals in game one, we play the Dolphins on game two. Now watch what happens if I kind of change the order of our table rows. Now I've gone and kind of messed up the whole flow of the table because I moved the cardinal cell to the end of the row. So it's really important that when you're constructing your HTML tables that you consider the chronology and the order of your, of your data. And it's really important from row to row that you remain consistent in how you reflect that data. So if we want to change the order by which we're showing this information, for example, if we wanted to show the date and the time before the team that we're playing, we'd have to do so with every single row in the table. So super important. So I'm going to highlight all of this data, and I'm going to move it on that, uh, on that first row. And if I go ahead and I tighten that feedback loop and I refresh the page, you can see that I've reflected that change on my first row, but not consistently on the second, third, fourth, and fifth row. So we've got to go ahead and follow through with that change. Update our subsequent rows here so that they all correlate. So I'm moving my date and time in between the game number and the team we're playing. All right, so we can see how the order is important as it pertains to our table cells, and each TR tag represents a row in the table. <coughs> so up until this point, we've been dealing with what we call uh, sym symmetrical uh, uh, tables in that each row has five uh, columns in it. So we should make sure that every single row in that table has five columns. Now what happens if I only partially fill out a given table? Row. And we'll say that this game six is going to take place at 1 p.m. on 10-16. A lot of 1 p.m. games. All right, so here we see that uh, we've introduced an asymmetrical row, right? Because we have only three cells in this particular row, where every row that has come be before it has five. Let's see how the browser behaves with this uh, modification. Notice that the rows are incomplete and we still have work to do here to make the row consistent and symmetrical. So the uh, HTML web browser, uh, in this case Chrome, is gonna try to make a best guess at what you're trying to accomplish here and try to show the data as best it possibly can. Um, so, but in general, when you're writing your HTML tables, you wanna try and keep your rows symmetrical so that uh, there's an equal number of TD tags for every TR in your table element. All right, so let's go ahead and flesh this uh, row out so that we've got consistency here. Uh, this is gonna be on 1016 and we're playing the Bengals. And we're home. <laughs> All right. So if we go ahead and we refresh our page, we get back to our place where every row in our table is reflected as a uh, five column row. And that's generally where we want to be when we're dealing with HTML tables. Okay. So We've talked about how to structure our HTML tables using table row tags and table data tags. 
Now, what we can do is right now, we don't have a lot of context as it pertains to what each column in this particular uh, table represents. So what we can do is we can actually add uh, table headers to our table. And we're going to do so with the introduction of a T head element. And we're going to create a new table row. And instead of using a TD tag, we're going to actually use a TH tag, which means table header. So we're going to actually go ahead and flesh this out. And because we've set the encoding, we don't necessarily have to use an escape character for this pound sign here. And just like we're trying to remain symmetrical uh, in each individual table row, we want to make sure that the table header has a relevance to uh, each table data uh, and we've got a one-to-one -one correlation between TH tags and TD tags here. All right, so what we've done here is we've added a new table head tag that's going to have uh, a table header and uh, later with CSS, we're gonna be able to treat this table header differently from every other row in the HTML table. But let's see what the browser does by default here. See here how it has uh, helped us with the text justification of each row in the HTML table. So where we created game number, it's given us white space so that the eye can line up each relevant field in the table. So we've got a little bit more context as it relates to uh, each of the cells in the HTML table. So all of, those, uh, all of the uh, cells in the first column are gonna represent the index of the game or the, the, the game number. And then we have the same for date, time, uh, who they're playing and whether they're home or away. So this is, at its core, the most basic uh, of an HTML web, uh, a web table. And uh, typically, we're going to have this idea of a T-head and actually a T-body, which we can indicate explicitly through the introduction of a T-body tag. So notice how I'm, again, using white space to my advantage here and I'm showing the nesting relationship where this particular table row is showing underneath the table head. And then the main pieces of data that are showing up for uh, at the actual uh, games and game information, that's all showing underneath the T-body tag. So we're using white space to our advantage here to show the relationship between our table tags, our T-head and T-body tags, and our correlating table row tags, and then all the way down to our TH and TD tags here. Um, so you can see here how we're using indentation to our advantage. Now what happens when we want to add additional data to this uh, particular example? So one thing that we may want to add is the uh, way in which I can view the games. So if we click on each row, we can see that uh, we can either watch them on TV, we can watch online, or we can listen to the game on the radio. So we may want to go ahead and add this for each game that we've populated so far. Now again, just like we, we saw with adding game six, we have to uh, consistently add this information for every single row in the, the, the table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the table heads uh, and I'm going to say uh, TV, radio, and online. Now, I've gone ahead and I've added these three additional columns to my table. Watch what happens kind of in between me actually adding the data into each game. See, I've added the head, but no data is populated underneath. And again, this is the browser trying to do its best in understanding what I'm in the process of doing 
in terms of adding this information to this HTML table. So I've got to go ahead and add three TD elements to each row in my T body now. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And for the purposes of uh, being expedient here, I'm just going to copy in three cells for each row. And I'm going to go ahead and populate that with the actual data that correlates with the Patriot schedule. All right, so we'll fill in a few of these. So the Cardinals is going to be on NBC and it's going to be on 98.5 uh, here in Boston and uh, it's going to be available online. For the Dolphins game, it's going to be on CBS, and it's going to be available on 98.5 FM, and it's going to be available online. So we could go on and on down the line uh, to basically uh, relate the broadcast information with each game that happens uh, in the Patriots schedule here. So let's see what that looks like. So again, here's the HTML table trying to uh, update and, and, and correlate all this information. We get a nice formatted table that keeps everything uniformly distributed on the web page. Cool. All right. So, you know, one, for the first time we're seeing here that these rows are somewhat related. They have uh, contextual relationships in that uh, this all pertains to how this uh, game is, how each game is going to be broadcasted. So if we wanted to relate each of those items, for the first time we're going to actually use uh, a call span and we're going to uh, discuss how we can have certain uh, cells span multiple columns using that call span attribute. So what we need to do is actually define a new table row and we're going to create a new set of table headers. And in this case, we're basically summarizing contextually the different pieces of information on the table. Now watch what happens when I refresh this page the broadcast info is going to show up directly above date. And in order to get this to function the way that we want it to function, where broadcast info would be centered around TV, radio, and online, we have to incorporate the call span attribute. So we're going to say for the game info, well, the game info is pertinent to the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth column. So we're going to have this table head span five columns and we're going to have the broadcast info span three columns so the call spans add up to the total number of cells we have in the html table so we've got five plus three equals eight and then we've got eight table heads directly below it let's see how this changes the display and we get a, a better correlation of the information in our HTML table. So game info is going to span across the game number, the date, the time, the opponent, and whether we're home or away. The broadcast info is going to span over the last three columns, which is TV, radio, and online. So we can use the call span attribute to essentially cheat our tables to basically have asymmetrical rows. The important thing to keep in mind here and the important thing to always observe is that the number of columns match up from row to row. So our call spans here uh, equal up to eight and then we have unique and individual headers uh, below that and then for the rest of our table rows we have eight, col uh, eight columns as well. So we want to try to keep things as consistent as possible using this HTML table markup. 
Now, like we can do call spans, we can also do row spans. So for example, if we wanted to keep track of sort of our home stretches and our away stretches, we could do so using a row span. And what we're gonna need to do is add a cell into our table. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna show uh, in graphically how long uh, the Patriots are gonna be on the road versus home. So uh, this is an away stretch. So we'll just put an A in front of it. And this is a home stretch. And we're home for the next three games. So I'm not going to include this additional cell uh, on the second and third stretch of home games that we have in this particular table. I am going to basically show when we're back on the road again here and when we're back home again. Now watch how this renders. It's going to kind of show up all kinds of wonky, right? And that's because I've broken up the pattern of keeping my uh, home and away stretches uh, symmetrical uh, on our game by game uh, uh, sort of perspective. So what we need to do is if we want to display this relationship and kind of show that we're home for three games in a row, I need to go ahead and add a row span to my first cell up here. And what this is going to do is this is going to stretch this H all the way down uh, into my third game and my fourth game. And this should make things look a lot better. So you can see here, I've appropriately used the row spans to basically and accurately reflect uh, our stretches. So uh, here we're away, and then here we're home. And if we inspect this, we can see that uh, our H here is vertically aligned between games two, three, and four. So that stretch is a three game stretch of, of home games. So that row span three basically makes it so that I don't have to add redundant TDs uh, here in my uh, game three row in my game four row. So you can start to see how row spans and call spans can make things super, super confusing. So one thing you always wanna make sure you do and check is that you're always gonna have the same number of columns from row to row. And with call spans, that's pretty easy to do because all you have to do is add up uh, the, the call span numbers. With row spans, you kind of have to have context around the entire table and make sure that you're considering the fact that uh, for game two, our first cell in the table is going to expand downwards into game three and game four. So HTML tables can be a little wacky. But I wanted to show you all of its capabilities here so that you have a good understanding of data that uh, the HTML table is well suited towards. Now back in the day, we actually used to use tables for layouts. So before section tags existed and div tags were very popular, and really CSS was very popular, we used to use a system of these nested tables to basically create are very nice looking web pages. That's a bad idea. Our tables in this case, uh, as we incorporated into our favorite team schedule uh, ID here, is well suited for the data that we're reflecting. And that's because it's tabular data. And what I mean by tabular data is we're associating rows and columns together to basically create relationships amongst data. So in our home and away column, we've got away versus home data. And likewise, we've got game numbers in our game number column. So it's just a great way to sort of reflect in and show the, uh, the data that we have here uh, as it pertains to each Patriots game in the season. Now, if you look back in internet history, we used to use uh, tables to basically make our pages look good because it gave us the most control over text alignment and spacing and things like that. 
But this is really bad practice and not something that you want to do. And there's a couple of reasons why uh, you don't want to do that. And I'm going to go ahead and just send this uh, very handy URL to Spencer so he can share it uh, in the Facebook uh, commentary. But basically, uh, what we want to reflect here is modern web developers do not use tables for layouts. And the reasoning for that goes into what we discussed last episode, which is really around accessibility and making the uh, assumption that uh, not everyone is consuming the web uh, as a visual user. Uh, things like screen readers, uh, for those that are visually impaired, will not handle tables very well. Not to mention, you can imagine as we get more and more drawn out with this data and we start to nest crazy, crazy elements inside these, each of these table data cells, how this could add significant weight uh, in terms of text size to our HTML web page. So the HTML table is really only well suited for this type of data, where we're trying to reflect a, a combination of rows and columns of information. So if you have a spreadsheet that you wanna kinda of put online, or really any kind of mathematical data, that's where an HTML table is gonna be more well suited. So I hope that's helpful for you. And uh, as we close things out, I just wanna show you uh, one more element that we didn't cover, and that's the caption tag. And we can use the caption tag as a way to annotate the table that we just built. So this is the 2016-2017 NFL schedule for the New England Patriots. So we use that caption tag to kind of just illustrate what this table represents. And again, for screen readers, uh, and for those that are visually impaired, this caption is gonna provide so much more context to this data. So it's always a good idea to have a caption to your table so that people understand what that table represents. Let's look at what that looks like. So we can see how this caption has been added to the table. Now, uh, what we can do is we can, to finish things off, just go ahead and copy this and throw it into the W3Org validator. Make sure uh, everything is green and ready to go. And uh, we've got a, a few errors from our previous uh, work here that we can remedy. And we see here how uh, the HTML uh, validator is giving us some warnings about that asymmetrical table row that we were talking about. And these are warnings. We can decide to heed and remedy those warnings or we can not. It's totally up to us. But what the W3C validator is trying to do here is it's trying to help us really uh, structure our markup better. So if we had more time together, I'd go ahead and reflect the symmetrical number of rows uh, as we work through this data. So something to keep in mind as you work through uh, constructing your HTML tables. But when you run your validator, uh, you're gonna get either errors or warnings. And warnings are just helpful messages providing you with some perspective on how to make your markup better. It's not necessarily gonna result in significant browser incompatibilities or variances uh, in terms of the display of your web page. Uh, you wanna make sure that you remedy any errors that you encounter and warnings are just the uh, attempt by the W3C to kind of just give you a good impression and understanding of what would make your markup better. So you don't necessarily have to act on warnings. You definitely want to go ahead and, and act on errors as they occur uh, and as you see them in your W3C validation. So that's what I wanted to cover today. And I'll just check in on questions and make sure uh, everyone is good. It looks like we are. Awesome. So uh, that's basically gonna wrap us up uh, as it pertains to covering HTML elements. Later in the course, we'll talk about forms and how to get information from your users. But we're going to switch gears on Thursday and start talking about styling. And we're gonna use cascading style sheets 
to basically start to make our web pages look pretty. So I hope you'll join me on Thursday. And if you're just joining us uh, on recordings, definitely go back and review those uh, previous episodes and you'll be ready to go with CSS on Thursday. I'll see you then. Thanks.